Blog Talk Radio. Welcome everybody, live, 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 under the mat radio, yeah, yeah. your host Tech, with co-host, NSC Game Boy, what it is, what it do, and with uh, the correspondent, the sensational one, Shinblade, how's everybody doing this week? Right, right. making it. Um, everybody do apologize, a little not under the weather for migraine at the moment, but you say the show must go on. This episode today is called Under the Mat Radio. Bullies and Swerves, as we have a couple of great guests coming on momentarily. We will have Carrie Mercer, who hosts and runs something called Letters for Rennie. Um, her 14 year old daughter has uh, experienced, experienced some traumatizing um, moments in school dealt, dealt with bullying. So we're going to bring her onto the show um, to talk about bullying and the fight against bullying, as you see a lot of. Um, the NFL, WWE, a lot of other companies and promotions around the world are trying to stop bullying around, you know, around the United States and um, other countries. It's very prominent. So anybody, if you have kids or whatnot, that want to be able to uh, tune in for the next half an hour to talk about bullying um, or even share your experiences, you can do so. You can call in at 347-677-1862, um, press the number 1. We will put you on through. Also, at the top of the hour, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, we will have our good old buddy and also newly signed talent, Tilisha Underground, Shane Swerve Strickland, will be joining us at 8 p.m. So, that being said, of course, you can follow Under the Mat Radio on Twitter at tech underscore UTMR. You can follow NSC Game Boy at NSC Game Boy, spelled correctly, please. Correctly. Yes, Thanks. please do. And I uh, also got a, you can follow Shinblade at. Uh, Sensational on Twitter, uh, S-H-I-N-S-A-T-I-O-N-A-L-O-N-E. Spell that one, yes. too. Yes, also, you can follow us on Facebook at Under the Mads Radio. Please follow our like page as well with the same name. That uh, uh, correspondent Shinblade does a great job at uh and promoting and being in charge of that. Also, please don't forget to follow our YouTube page, Under the Match Radio, as we have a lot of road trip videos that Shinblade is in charge of. Show us on the road as we go to and from events. Also, check out our great interviews that we do with all the great legends and current stars locally and around the world. Also, too, you will be able to listen to our archive episodes, which have which are under um, Pro Wrestling Powerhouse or affiliates, also that is under PWKGW. So you'll be able to listen to a lot of our <coughs> episodes. Also, if you ever need to email us with any questions, any ideas that you have for the show, um, you can email us at under the mats radio at gmail dot com. Also, gonna make a couple of quick announcements. Um, real quick before we bring in our caller and our guest that tomorrow live 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 we will have an exclusive interview with 2009 WWE Hall of Famer Coco Beware will be joining us at Under the Mat Radio he will be coming on to talk about his great career uh, wrestling in WWE of course with Frankie the Bird wrestling in the territories and just in general we're going to be bringing him onto the show especially with it being Black History Month also, T, if you have not been able to find out, on the Light Page Agree page, Under the Mat Radio on March 2nd, we'll have another exclusive pre tape interview with another WWE Hall of Famer, somewhat called the greatest ring announcer, ring commentator of all time, good old JR himself, Jim Ross, will be joining us. So if you have any questions that you want to ask Jim Ross, that you may want to ask Coco Beware, please send us a message on the Under the Mat Radio Light Page. Or you can also do so on the group page or email us too, and we'll be able to send those um, to those guys. Uh, anything in the C game, boy, Shane, you want to add before we bring in our call? No, nah, just uh, everybody make sure y'all send y'all questions in. Uh, you know, we are going to definitely go at it. Uh, Coco Beware and Jim Ross, you already know what it is, what to do. So, Shin? Uh just a YouTube page. I, I think you nailed that. I wasn't sure I tuned out for a second. I'm sorry. No, it's all cool. Try to get better at doing the YouTube, you know, the YouTube page, definitely. 
Um, with that being said, fans, we're going to bring in a 901 area code. Welcome to you under the match radio with Tech, NFC Game Boy, and Chimblade. 901, are you cool? Hello? Yes. Hey, how you doing? Radio. Hey, my man. What's going on, brother? Hey, I may be the early bird. This is the Birdman Coco Beware. Oh! oh. Hey, how's it going? Okay. <laughs> how you doing? Oh, it's very good. Very good, man. I just thought maybe I'd drop in, guys. Come on. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Yes, it is. Oh, <laughs> it definitely yeah. is. <laughs> well, well. Well, we got you on. Yes, it is. Well, we got you on, Coco. We do thank you for calling in. Um, we were just um, putting over on um, the fact that we're gonna have you on tomorrow night for an exclusive interview about your career. Anything that you want to plug or that you want to give us a little hint for the fans that that will be listening all over the world. Uh, what you were talking about? Well, you know, I just want the fans. To, I want everybody. In fact, in the whole world. If, Hey, man, crank your radio up because it's going to be hot, man. We, and I'm telling you right now, I am so excited to, to be able to talk to you guys and, and talk to my fans out there one more time and stuff like that. Frank is all fired up and stuff like that. You might hear him in the background squawking going on, but, man, I'm telling you, we're going to have a great time tomorrow night. Yes, yes, we wow. definitely will. And um, NFC Game Boy, real quick, is Shane, anything you want to uh, mention to Coco Beware? Well, Coco, we are excited here under the Met Radio. Um, I, I can't wait till tomorrow. Our fans are going to be submitting in questions and everything. It's just going to be an honor to get a chance to get your perspective uh, back in the old days and, and probably uh, your perspective of how the business is now with your influence and everything. So definitely can't wait, Shin. Um, I don't know. I'm just still in shock. You know, I'm talking to the bird, man, because it was one of my uh, stepfather's uh, favorite guys. I mean, he was just jealous of Coco because of his his uh, singing voice. Because he was singing, he was uh, singing the Pod Driver song, and my father, my stepfather, couldn't sing it. So he and he was a minister, so he always hated on Coco. He thought, well, Coco you know, I, I want him, to, I want him to join me tomorrow night because we're gonna sing just a little bit of the Pod Driver, and I just want him, I want him to tune in so he can join the Birdman and sing with me. Don't go against me. Sing with me. Well, unfortunately, go. unfortunately, Coco, uh, I, haven't seen, I haven't talked to him in about five years, so you know I don't know where he is. <laughs> oh my God! Out, I mean, man. you know he's. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a damper. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, can, really, really. <laughs> oh well. Oh maybe well. We can, maybe we can download download Shane. We can download your dad into that episode. Maybe we can get him to. I'm sure we can in, find hopefully. him somewhere. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. come on. I mean, he, he's well, out looking there at, probably listening to us right now. Well, yeah, you don't know it, though, but I can tell you that he's in Norfolk, Virginia, so somebody's going to tell him eventually. Well, man, I'm telling you, all you people up in North Virginia, spread the news and tell them that the Birdman Coco Beware will be on set tomorrow night. Don't forget it. I just want to give I you won't. guys to call in a little bit and just – let everybody know, because you know how wrestling fans, you know somehow the wrestling fans are. They're going to say, oh, it's not going to be the real Coco Beware. It's not going to be him. No, come on. So I kind of surprise everybody, just kind of give you a little treat for what, what's going to happen tomorrow night, okay? Well, yes. Yeah. Thank you much, Coco. We do appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, you bet. We can't wait. We're going to have you on tomorrow live, 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 and we're going to have, have some good old fun. All right. All right, guys. Y'all have All a good right. one. I'm going to step it out of it. Bye-bye. All right, take thanks. care. You listen, man. Hey, everybody, that was Hall of Famer 2009. Coco Beware, <laughs> dropping on in. You no know, head under the mat radio. You never know who's going to call or who's going to come on up. Real quick, with that being said, we're going to bring in our, our first guest. And we do thank Coco Beware. Thank yeah. you much for calling in. We're going to bring mm-hmm. in right now, Carrie Mercer. Welcome to Under the Mat Radio. You're alive now. How you doing today? Hi. Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Well, with that being said, I'm going to turn, I'm gonna turn it over to our uh, correspondent, Shane Blade, and have him start everything off. Hi, Carrie. Uh, we, we, uh, 
we talked last week on the independent podcast, Cheap Plug, with uh, Michael Scott, who we call MWS on our road trip videos, little Ma- Michael. Um, <laughs> I want you to I want you to tell the fans of uh, Under the Mat Radio Radio about your project, uh, Letters for Rennie, and just let them know uh, what it's all about. Okay. Um, it actually all started. Um few weeks ago when my daughter, who has been a victim of bullying, ended up in the hospital after a, an attempt, a suicide attempt, um, I, actually started, I actually started asking people to write her letters so that um, she could see that people loved her and that the, the words of the people that love her are stronger and louder than those that had been bullying her. And it kind of went from there, and we are in the process of um, turning it over to um, make it an actual project for uh, for anybody who needs uh, kind words. Um, recently, we actually, and this is since I talked to you last year, um, I started a website and everything like that, and I received a letter from, or we received a letter from an eight-year-old girl who has been bullied since kindergarten. And she and her daughter, or her sister, actually uh, wrote Rennie letters talking about how the, the, the younger sister has been bullied and the older sister, who I think is only 10, um, has watched her being bullied. So she wrote in saying that, you know, the Rennie's story actually inspired her. So we're actually responding to these letters and giving them encouragement in return. So... Um, it's really kind of, it hasn't, it's gone from a specific um, project to we're kind of going in a few different directions here since I spoke to you last. So um, if, okay. there's anything specific, if there's anything specific um, that I've missed, just let me know. Like I said, it just kind of exploded on us. So, um, but long story short, my daughter Serenity, um, that's Rainy short for Serenity, she, um, She's 14 years old, and she's been bullied since third grade. And uh, she just got really tired of hearing people, you know, and and dealing with it. And unfortunately, you know, things at school, um, people weren't taking it as seriously as they should. So it got the best of her. And what we're trying to do is help people um, before it gets that far, really. So... Uh, well, can you tell um, can you tell them how how did it start and the way that it built up? Just in case somebody is going through the same story. Uh, you mean with Serenity? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean she, um, you know, she's a year behind in school because she had a, a reading problem, um, and with her birthday being after the cutoff, she's kind of two years older than some of the kids in her class. Um, so okay. in third grade, she was built like a fifth grader. And there were um, many boys, especially, that didn't know how to handle her kind of shape, (laughs) for lack of better words. And um, there were a lot of kids in her class that were mocking the words of their older brothers and sisters in high high school, the way they talked to each other. Um, And so they were explicitly telling my daughter what they wanted to do to her in the shower. And then they would grab her. um, And then the girls would pick on her, call her ugly, and and she's far from ugly. Um, You know, because they were jealous of her. And, you know, so it just, it, it was constant. And then through the years, she just kept getting this, you know, more and more people picking on her. She can sing. She's an artist. She's all these things. And everybody in school that... No, I don't say everybody in school, but everybody that was on her, you know, bullying her, they, they tried to tear her down. And, you know, we tried to explain to her that, you know, a lot of times it's jealousy. Well, then recently it became a question of her sexuality because um, she came out to uh, her friends in school and people who were supposed to be her friends um, didn't take it very well. And one of mm-hmm. the boys actually told her that people like her don't deserve to live. So uh. that's oh, nice. what happened in the process that was that was that Friday and or the Friday before and that Monday is when she tried to take her own life. So, uh-huh. but yeah, uh-huh. but she's she's been home. Yeah, she's home now. It's been three weeks. So 
Okay. She she was not. Yeah, she's she's doing a lot better, and and this project is actually keeping her very busy. So. <laughs> Right. But well I'm gonna turn with Debbie, so I'm gonna turn it over to uh my co host NSC Game Boy. Um, so he can share share his thoughts and his questions. Um, a lot of people ask when it comes to bullying, um, usually uh the circumstances of the, the child uh in question is usually from peer pressure of course. Um sometimes uh abnormalities, you know, or it can be academics where the the, the child is Succeeding more, and, and the other kids are jealous and stuff. What what category do you think um, do your daughter mostly fit in this situation? Um, do you think they were just jealous because of uh, you know like peer pressure, like one person started and it gone from there, or her academics, or you know uh, her succeeding or, or being a lot, I guess, smarter, quote unquote. Um, what um, area do you think that probably triggered this in your beginning, opinion in, in my opinion in the beginning a lot of it was jealousy um like i said she's extremely talented and she she resembles somebody like selena gomez like she's got that hispanic look she's very pretty um she can sing and could easily you know i'm not just saying this as her mother i've been told this by her chorus teachers as well that she could easily win something like the voice you know um mm-hmm. she's very very talented um and the places that we have lived in the past very small town mentality where many of the kids parents never made it out of that town so you know, they're very small-minded and very they have very shallow goals and dreams and, and they would tear her down because she had, she was positive about her future. And then, um, so a lot of that over the years was jealousy. And then, um, you know, because of her look, you know, and it's like I said last week when I was on the independent podcast, you know, I was picked on a lot in high school because I was a total nerd, you know. I had really frizzy hair and, you know, all this kind of stuff. My daughter is a very pretty girl, so I said, oh, you know, this is she'll be yeah. fine. You know, she's pretty, she's talented. And it turns out that it's been worse for her than it was for me because of that being in that position where people are jealous of her. But now she's in a different category because we still live in an area where people are a little, a little bit more small-minded than they should be. And boys are mad at her because she won't date them. So they call her a slut, and a, you know, and, and yeah. all these things because oh, she, she she prefers women, <laughs> or she prefer, prefers girls. So they get the guys get mad at her, and they say all these things. And then the girls who, um, are you know are are jealous of her for other reasons. They make fun of her, and you know, I think she, my daughter's had <laughs> before she realized where she was with her sexuality. She dated the same boy since fourth grade, so. <laughs> You know, she's she's a one one person kind of girl, and you know, and, and people are saying she's pregnant, she was a slut, and all these different things. So, I mean, I, it, it's a broad category, but I think that's really where it is with her. You know. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I um I want to say that um I want to give give you uh want to give you big ups and and um, commend you for starting what you're doing. You'd love to see your daughter. Um, for that to help your daughter out. Was was that a cat in the background? <laughs> was that your cat in the background? A cat? No. Yeah. Well, I'm like, oh no, those are my children. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Okay. I have, oh. I have, yeah. No, I have five children. Three. Uh, they're my father just came into town, so they I had to come into the other room because they were greeting him. So. <laughs> but it was the door. Okay. Um, please don't say we. We are glad that um that that you giving your daughter support in, in the letters um that's that's been uh, sent to her. With the letters being sent to your daughter with with the bullying, um, could you let us know any letters that might I know I'm sure all the letters that you get for your daughter is very important, but uh any letters that stand out uh more than the others to you, some that really touch your heart or even touch your daughters. Um, I, you know, we've gotten over a hundred letters, and I think the ones that touched us both the most was the one that we got from those two little girls because, um, you know, we were told when we started this or when I started this that um, that this 
was actually an inspiration for people because they were able to write her and tell their story. And it was very therapeutic for them to be able to say, this happened to me too, because a lot of people never got any resolve for, for what happened to them. So, you know, for for this eight-year-old girl to be able to say, this is what's happened to me, and I know that, you know, um, that these people don't matter and that I shouldn't let them get to me and, and to see that this girl at eight years old is as positive as she is um, and the support that she was getting from her sister, I think, was most important to somebody like Serenity because, like I said, she has many brothers and sisters. So um, I think that that one really touched. Um, and then there was another one that we got from a woman who's 61 years old, and um, <laughs> she's a fiery redhead. And she said back when she, in elementary school when she was younger, um, people made fun of redheads pretty badly. So she spent yeah. years, uh, years actually getting picked on. And um, she made something of herself when she grew up. And she said she realized that her red, she could use her red hair to her advantage. So she was able to find positive, you know, uh, be positive about her situation. But, you know, talking about how mean people were back then and how she was able to rise above it. So, I mean, it's hard to pick one over the other, you know, because there's so many people. Most of the people that wrote in have some way, shape, or form been a victim of bullying, and, and some have been able to rise above it, and some even today are still suffering. Adults are still suffering from it. So, you know, it's it's all been an amazing experience getting these letters, and we're, you know, we're in the process of actually trying to collect letters for that little eight-year-old girl that just wrote us in, too. So, you know, we're we're trying to pass it forward. <laughs> right, okay. So. Um, how is it, uh, if you can take us through the differences that you've seen, Rennie, you know, the, the positive change you've seen in Rennie before you started the letters to her and um, currently right now, after the hundreds of more letters that she's got? Um. The unfortunate thing, you know, especially with her, is that she was she was starting to believe everything that people were saying because I think it was being said enough that she her self confidence was really low, um, and she almost found herself believing a lot of what they said, and you know, reading all these perfect strangers' letters and, and, and the things that she's been getting from even family and different things like that, um, you can see she almost has to she almost has to read what they say, think about what they say, and, and forcing her to respond to these letters is making her think about what they're saying and actually absorb it and and and, and take it in. And I've seen um, you know, she's she's more positive about herself. Um, she's more positive about the experiences that she's going through, whether they're good or bad, you know, knowing that she can rise above it. Um, and now she's able to um, take what she's learned and read from these letters and help other people in her situation. So I've seen a big improvement in that with her. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad that, that, she's, um, that she's growing. Um in that early grown confidence and that she see people do care about her. Because a, a lot of people have dealt with building. I, I've dealt with building a little bit. Um, me growing up, it wasn't ever severe. But, you know, kids, kids are kids, you know, picking, you know, you look different or you act different or you study, you know. I was called, called a nerd mm-hmm. and a geek back in school also. But, um, <laughs> Same here. <laughs> to get, yeah, and, and, but, you know, the good thing is that she has family support and, she has a support system, which is very good. Um, I, have a, I have a background of working with a lot of kids from um, 14 years old to 85. I used to work at a community college as a computer technician okay. and also working with students' um, enrollment. So working with a lot of kids, your daughter age and older, even some older people, they were bullying. Um, a lot of people tend to think of bullying with just schools and they forget that there's people still get bullied at work, you know, or other areas Absolutely. Um, too. So it's very important that kids that deal with bullying have a support system, either it be family or friends or somebody that they can talk to that can encourage them. And the good thing is that your daughter has that with 
the letters, you know, with here the show and uh, with Michael and, uh, you know, everybody here at our network. So that's good that she has that. Yeah, absolutely. And what, like I said, we're we're trying to um we're trying to do that for other people too as well, you know, be able to take what we've learned and help anybody who needs that, you know, that same positive reinforcement as well. So turn it over to Assembly. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was bullied myself in school, like, you know, coming getting into middle school I was like, you know, you speak different, this, that and the whole nine and plus I was a lot taller than a lot of other people in school, so I know I know how it is the feeling and everything. And plus, you know, having having uh, that notion. And, and personally, I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a groundbreaking uh, I'm gonna give a groundbreaking point that I never really told anybody. But in high school, I went afoul of some female student on a road on a on a field trip. And next you know, she said this, that, and the third. And the next day in school, like that weekend, everybody thought I was gay for like four years. And, um, you know, it was like being picked on and this, that, and people just like, you know, girls wouldn't talk to me because they thought I was actually gay. And it was it was a really, really hard time because it was like I'm not this person. So it it got to the point where I never had friends in school. I had like few and far between, and, and it just, so I know I, I know a bit of how Rennie is feeling, and to say that um, coming into it now, uh, many years later after high school, I, I, I'm, I'm at this place now, and the people who used to torment me, they're nowhere they're nowhere near above the dirt. So mm-hmm. you know it's kind of a better feeling, but to be honest with you, maybe I defeat the purpose a little bit of being that guy that doesn't bully, but being the guy that bullies bullies. Just because they like to pick on people, maybe maybe I defeat the purpose of that one or something. <laughs> well, I you know I know what you what you mean about you know kind of being below you know below you in that sense. I mean, like with me, I was a big nerd, and my I didn't just get it from my peers, but my chorus teacher told me that although I had a voice to make it in the music business, I didn't have the look, so not even to bother. And um, so I didn't. I never tried, and I kicked myself in the butt all the time because I probably should have. But I listened to people like that, and now, like with me, I'm getting ready to publish a book, and I'm doing all these things in my life. And those same people, including my chorus teacher, are still stuck in that small little town, <laughs> doing exactly the same mm-hmm. thing that they did. And when I went back from my high school reunion. It felt really good to walk in there and not be the little nerd because I actually kind of grew out of my goofy looks and walked in there and everybody's mouth dropped and it felt really good. And I'm not the type of person to usually laugh in people's faces, but I couldn't help but go, ha. Ah. <laughs> 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 Especially when I beat them all at a game of pool because, you know, I, I'm ex-military and I played a lot of pool, so... You know, and everybody was like talking to me, and then I was over it and left, and never spoke to them again. But it felt really good. <laughs> so. I like them apples. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I have a uh, question. I want to ask. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when people are bullied, especially in uh, a lot in the counties, a lot of stories I hear of young girls. Um. <clears throat> you know, hurting themselves, uh, almost trying to kill themselves, uh, usually because of YouTube or, uh, you know, uh, Facebook or something, you know. What methods do you think someone could use to kind of get away from, you know, uh, cyberbullying? Because I I feel that cyberbullying is so much detrimental than physical bullying because when, when I grew up, I was physically bullied. And I also mm-hmm. bullied, so I was I was a bully and a and I got bullied. So I know the the stake of both sides of it. And um, you know, I got into martial arts, which really showed me to respect not only myself but to respect people. And you know, I I didn't you know I didn't I grew up in the 80s and the 90s, so I didn't have the the benefit of you know the internet. But right, what could yeah. someone do? Or what what methods do you think they can take against cyberbullying? And, and you know the 
how it's it's, it's really so detrimental because you're being recorded or you know you're, you're being chastised and attacked and you can't really you know touch the person or speak to the person in that matter. Unfortunately, what we've found is that the only way we can stop that is by disconnecting our children because they have there's they have so much access to each other, you know, with the internet and cell phones and you know, um when when my daughter ended up in the hospital, I was going through her phone and there was a girl who was snap I'm sure you all know what Snapchat is. Um mm-hmm. she was sending her Snapchat videos of she was cutting herself and, you know, like with a razor blade mm. in these videos. And mm. she said she didn't mean to send them to my daughter, which I called the school like immediately. And I didn't know who the girl was, but I knew her handle name and they figured out who it was um, pretty quickly. But, um, you know, th- there's so much even access to, to that side of it, not just the side of bullying, but the, um, they can wallow in their misery together and they can, you know, everything is just right there at their fingertips. There's the, there's how-to videos on how to harm yourself on on the Internet. It's disgusting. And, you know, the only thing I've been able to figure out is just to completely disconnect them because you can warn them. You know, we've warned our children from the time they got their cell phones and, you know, you can the parental guidance and all this kind of stuff, but you can all things still seep through. So you almost have to, like, take them off, you know, <laughs> take them away from that in order to protect them. I mean, I can't, I haven't seen, if I figured out anything else, you know, to stop that. Okay. That'll work. Well, well, how how, how was, um, her, the, your daughter's friend now, was she doing okay? Um, as far as I know, yes. Um, she... I don't know. The school took action, but from what I gather, the parents didn't take it as seriously as they should have. Um, but, there, you know, confidentiality, I don't, you know, know any more than that. They were just able to tell me that. So um, my daughter has talked to her since then, and she's kind of said, hey, this is where I ended up. You're going to end up there if you keep doing this. So I know she's spoken to her as well, but the, the sad part is, is there are a lot of parents out there that don't pay attention and, I mean, we're one of those families that we pay attention to as much as near everything. Um, you know, we don't have access. We're not with them 24 hours a day because they're at school, and it still happens. So, you know, it worries me when you have these families that don't pay attention to what's going on with their kids. But um, she is, my daughter says she hasn't cut herself since then, so I'm hoping it stays that way. I'm hoping by me telling the school it scared her <laughs> into stopping, mm-hmm. so... Hmm. Well, if you can, um, if we can ask you this real quick, because I know we're limited on time, is uh, mm-hmm. the next two or three years from now, where do you see, or should I say, what's your ultimate goal for um, Letters uh, to Rennie? Um, Our goal is that we are going to take the letters that she has received um, and we are going to publish them in a book um, so that parents can give them give this book to their children because a lot of these a lot of these letters that she's received um even though they were addressed to her can really be addressed to anybody and we want to be able to have a tool that parents can give their children um so that they can read it you know even the way we've decided maybe is you know it's it's letters for Rennie, but leave it so that it could be letters too, and the parent can put the child's name in it, so that okay. they can personalize it and and make it feel make them feel like this is important to them, um, and just keep um, asking people to write in to tell us about a person who needs love and you know, and letters from anybody all over the world. Um, and we will do the same thing for their child as we did for Rennie, you know, and, and ask for letters and care, and care packages and different things that they can they can send in to that person. So, you know, we're hoping at this point that we can um, definitely start helping other people in the next two or three years, hopefully have the book published and have, a, um, you know, some really good traffic to our website. So, Well, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, Kari, um, if if there was ever possible, is Rennie listening now? 
Um, no, but actually I can get her. Hold on one second. Actually, Come here for a second. Hey, is the uh, BDV uh, patient we're waiting to get uh, Rennie uh, on the line so we can speak to her for maybe a minute or two? Sure. Hold on one second. Yes. All right, she's here. Okay, Rennie? Yes? Yes, how you doing, Rennie? Hey. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Hello. It's going good. Hey. That's good. So then I'll let you know this is uh, Under the Mat Radio. We was interviewing your mom, and we just wanted to send our support and prayers to you. Just wanted to uh, encourage you to keep on working hard in school and keep being the person you are. Thank you. No problem. Uh, yeah, can sure. you, boy? I just wanted to know and just wanted to say to you, because I actually, my, one of my daughters is named Serenity. And I love your name. Uh, I Thank named you. Her, it's a beautiful name, and I hope that you understand the meaning of your name. And it is, you know, it's a very peace, and that's the peace that you're going to have to carry because you're special. And when you're special, you usually become attacked by people who don't understand how special you are. So even though you know we are far away, and I know that your travels is going to be very difficult. Remember that your name means a lot, and you're touching a lot of people. And one day these people will see just how special you are just as much as we already know. So I commend you. Thank you. you. I commend you. And keep bringing on the blessings. Uh, Shin? Well, just like NFC Game Boy said, uh, you know, people, you know, they kind of fear special in in these uh quote that I always use is uh, people fear t- what they don't understand and they hate what they fear and to tell you the truth all you have to do is also be uh, serenity, keep strong, keep your eyes on the prize and within 10, 12 years you'll be looking down on them. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Very welcome. You, very you have, welcome. You have, a good, you have a good day, Rennie, and Make sure you keep up the good work in school, and make sure you tell your mom, your parents that you love them. Okay. All right. All right. Let's be back to your mom real quick. Okay. You take care. Okay. Thank Bye-bye. you. You too. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. I'm here. Right. Okay. Well, we just wanted to say, on behalf of Under the Merit Radio and all of our affiliates, we want to thank you for your time, um, Carrie, and we thank you for. Even um, letting to speak to your daughter, um, we was able to give kind of words to her. And thank Absolutely, you for, uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> mm-hmm. No problem. Uh, and it's a game boy. Uh, any words? Well, like I said to her, my daughter's name is Serenity. Also, I named her, and I just wanted okay. to remind her how special it is. And it's the Serenity means peace. And usually, when mm-hmm. you are a special person, you are constantly attacked because people don't understand. You know how special you are. So it's good that, you you know, the letters is, is is coming together, and at a young age you'll be able to touch so many people and save so many lives. So we're glad to be a part of it, and I'm glad to have a chance to interview you all and get your message out there. Thank you. Really appreciate it, uh, having us on here, being able to talk about it and, you know, let anybody know, you know, that they are more than welcome to write in and um, we will help out as much as possible. <laughs> yes. uh, Shimbley, I'll give you the last words to um, speak to Carrie before we let her go. Um, I just want to say, Carrie, thank you for uh, answering my call to be on the show, um, from being, doing the independent podcast. Um, I will take that uh, link that, that I was given from you a week ago, and I'm going to share it. And I'm going to try to spread the words as much as I can because this, to me, is a very, very serious subject. And what uh, NFC Game Boy was stating and Tech was saying about cyberbullying, it makes it a whole lot worse. And I just, want to say God, and I just want to say God feed to you and your family and to anybody who's listening out there who's a victim and uh, or has been a victim of bullying. Thank you so much, um, like I said, for for asking me to be here. And, you know, if there's anything I can do, let me know. 
and Rennie's Rennie's getting back to the, you know, back to her old self. So, you know, I mean, she's a little shy still, but you know, she's she'll be glad to talk to more later if need be. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> with that being said, uh, anything that you need to plug, Carrie, um, for for the letters, any you know, your YouTube or Facebook, any um, social media that you want to plug before we let you go. Um, we actually have a website. It's www.lettersforreni.com. Um, so you can access everything from there. You can find our Facebook page on there. So that's the best way to get a hold of us. All right. Okay. Well, you All have right. a good day, Carrie. Thank you much. And All hug right. your daughter and family. Thank you so much. And we'll be talking to you right. soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Everybody that was Carrie Mercer um, gave a very touching story of her daughter and how she's trying to fight through life, uh, getting past her bullying experiences in school. Um, NFC Game Boy, your thoughts on the interview? I just want to let people know because, uh, you know, bullying is, is not just a white thing. It's not just a black thing, you know. It's not a, it's not a, it's a race thing. It's not a gender thing. Anybody can be bullied. And uh, I think uh, Shin uh, said it when, you know, people can get bullied on their jobs and people can get bullied in their churches. People can be get bullied in their neighborhoods. You know, bullying is, is there's so many different forms of it. And a lot of times when you are being bullied, the the most, the key to bullying is the fact that you feel alone. You feel like you're fighting alone and you don't want to open yourself up because you don't want to be embarrassed. And Bullying is nothing to be embarrassed about. Fans, if you're out there, children, if you're listening, always know that there are people out there who are willing to talk to you, who's willing to help you, who understands and been there. I, all three of us can agree that we've all been there. So feel yes. free to contact us under the Mad Radio. We can send you the information. I, I know our correspondents putting up the links on the page, you know, the letters to Rennie, and, you know, anybody who, who have any questions, you know, Feel free to inbox us, because this is a very yeah. serious matter. It, it, very, it very is. serious. It is. It Shen? definitely is. Yeah, Shen. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty much. And you know, um, I also was told this. Um, I think I forgot who I told this to, but um, somebody wise told me this for the ones who are uh, planning to commit suicide, which is never good. And I say committing suicide is a temporary solution to a uh, permanent problem. And, you know, uh, like I said, it's just I'm just very, very thankful because uh, we actually needed that uh, personally. And since you know that all three of us have been bullied, it won't be that hard for you to come to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So with that, I just want to also give a shout-out to our good old buddies at Pro Wrestling Powerhouse. Please check them out, Jay Leto and the great team there, ProWrestlingPowerhouse.com. Check them out. They have all great original great original content and articles on the world of pro wrestling all over the world. They also have writers from overseas in the U.K. and in Japan. Um, they do, Jay, emphasize that all of their articles are organic. They are um their own. Some websites tend to copy and paste articles and they'll come up with their own material, but at ProWrestlingPowerhouse.com, they definitely do. Um, I've always been a supporter for, for us of Under the Mat Radio since day one. So if you can, you want to read some wrestling news, get some exclusive articles, exclusive opinions of the world of wrestling, please check them out. Now, mm-hmm. we're going to bring in Shin Blade on this one to see who's the correspondent. Of course, one of the things that are viral that I heard waking up this morning is uh, Mr. Seth Rollins in the WWE. Oh, good. So, Shin Blade, you can go ahead and give the details on that and let uh, NFC Game Boy give his thoughts. Anybody that want to give their thoughts to call in at 347-677-1862. Well, to be honest with you, I have never... I didn't really read as close into it. Even somebody at work told me about this, which I never heard of. Um, and they were saying, like, his girlfriend and him were 
you know, trading picks because Seth Rollins is on the road doing Raw shows and, you know, how it is for a wrestler. And did did somebody hack into his uh, phone or something? Think think so. I think someone did hack into something. So, yeah, um, so high school, Seth, Ray, Seth Rollins. Yeah, I mean, here's another part of bullying. You know, they saw Seth Rollins' uh, uh uh, money in the bank, literally, and posted online, as well as seeing uh, his his fiance and posted it. And you know, I think both sides were furious about that. So it's not like a uh, slander type case on each other. Yeah, just to let you know, his, his mm-hmm. Instagram his Instagram account account was hacked. So that's pretty much what happened. WWE has has removed the photo since. Yeah, I think a, a WWE diva, um, an NXT star, female star, was also uh, yeah. had some new that was sent out too. Z- Zahara um, Schreiber. I know Shin is the, uh, the NXT guy. No, wait, wait a minute. That isn't that his fiance. No, uh, is that? Uh, his fiance? His fiance is Lee, uh, Layla, Layla Schultz. Schultz. Yeah, that's his fiance. Oh, okay. Because um, as I as I said before, fans, I haven't gotten to the story. I, I've been very very busy as of late. Um, but you know, I mean, like I said, it's just another form of bullying, and um, there's a lot of memes that are coming out on the internet as well about Seth Rollins, and I think somebody posted it on our group page uh, a picture of Dean and Roman Reigns in street gear, saying, "Hey, Seth." Uh, we hear you got a new maneuver called the small package, which you know that was a jab and everything. But um, oh, man. you know, personally, huh. personally, I could I could care less about these things. I mean, I know WWE is a publicly traded company, but this is the reason why people have been trying to jab at me again the Instagram account and you know stuff like that is one of them. Even though I don't do personal picks like that. Well, sorry, I got some bad news for you, Shane. <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> so, so from being a computer technician, everything can be hacked. So, don't don't use the excuse of uh, something being hacked while you don't get an Instagram account. So, I don't. You know, it, well, it can all happen. It's okay. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't do that on my Twitter anyway. You know, it's just nothing personal that I put on my Twitter. I mean, come on now, if I put. And this is not for kids, by the way. If I put, quote, unquote, myself on Twitter, you know how many followers I would actually lose from that? Yeah, you might gain some. You might gain some. Who knows? Really? That don't work Game Boy, I'm sure you are. (laughs) Everywhere. Every every way it gets hacked. Every every site's got hacked. Even NFC Game Boy's uh, arch rival, Sony. Um, they've got hacked by twelve year old four kids. So Well, I mean, you know, my uh my Facebook got hacked a couple of years ago. You yeah, know, so I have is. I have I don't mind private pics and videos of me and stuff. I've done all types of crazy stuff. So I'm I'm pretty sure if somebody hacked me and they put it out there, I always was taught if you're gonna record it then you better make sure you look good doing it. So if my mm-hmm. my stuff get leaked out, I ain't gonna get mad because I already made sure I exactly. I handle business. Oh, 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 Seth Rollins, I really don't think that Seth should be punished like that. I don't think this is a matter of national security. I don't think this is a matter of, you know, that's going to actually hurt the product. Um, You know, actually it's going to make a lot of women be more Seth Rollins fans probably, so that's going to it's going to gain him a lot <laughs> oh, more yeah. attention. You know what I mean? Because, oh, yeah. you know, he's an attractive guy. You know what I mean? A lot of oh, chicks like okay. him. I mean, he, you know, athleticism. Uh, I'm Cross sorry, did, did I say something wrong? Oh, you, you good, brother. I mean, he's, no, no, he's no, a handsome no. dude. You know I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But, Real you know what I mean? Rank, and rank. I, I, if, I'm sorry, go ahead. 
No, go ahead, continue. Uh, I'll, I'll say when she's done. Okay, well, you know, he's a, a handsome guy, and if if I was the day that he, I would not put too much emphasis in it. Why? Because what they're going to do is they're going to go and they're going to, you know, get the, uh, the, the, the female fans who probably did see the pictures, who probably copied and pasted it on their computers and passing it around, and they won't want to see more of Seth Rollins. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, you know, like – I ain't gonna say a, a blessing in disguise, but you know, I, I think that <laughs> I think that this situation Cash on in. it depends on how good their their uh their their PR does to try to flip this. But mm-hmm. I don't think that this is something that he needs to really be punished. Um the the, the female the I guess the uh fiance she admitted that she did it. She publicly admitted that she she posted it out there, she she did oh. try to tarnish him, I guess, the ex girlfriend or ex fiance, whatever, whatever she is. So I mean, it's not like you know. I mean, think about it. You know, the the more famous you are, if you got dirt out there, people want to use it. You know, they're going to well, they're well, going to use it to get well, money. Actually, well, actually, well, I want to ask both of you let, guys before just, you come just, in. Just to let you know, uh, breaking news, random news, national security. Forgot was a movie, two thousand three, oh, starred by Martin Lawrence and Steve Zahn. What the hell happened to him? Anybody seen this movie? Game Boy, I'm going to get back to this uh, subject. Uh, no, I'm get back to the I'm up in security. I saw half of it. It sucked. But they had Mark Lawrence, though. And is he Game Boy, your thoughts on national security? Oh, my God. I mean, it was all right. Just like all the other Martin movies. He was okay. Yeah. Martin, yeah. Martin's wasn't a great like comedian. the TV show. His movie. You know, no, great no, comedian, no. His TV show is the greatest, but, you know, his movies are kind of like subpar. You know, well, he, to, he did have a TV show. What was that TV show that came out late this year? Something with Kelsey Graham that lasted for like a week. Wow, really? Yeah, something about they were so, lawyers or something. Yeah, lawyers or something like that. Well, so still that. burns, Martin. Well, the, uh, to get back on the subject, uh, about a week ago, didn't almost the same thing happen with uh, Julian Edelman of the Patriots? Like a girl had banged him and then they posted a selfie or something? Mhm. We, we we don't we don't talk about the Patriots on here. Well, it's it's just, I I mean we don't like Tom Brady and the Patriots. I mean if Moose is listening, then please don't kill us. But it, it's just that uh, you know I mean she did deflate his balls and posted a selfie with him literally. Hey, yeah, you but, right. <laughs> but but it's just that that social media thing is like you know when you're famous you got to watch out who you who you land with you know I'm, I'm sorry to say mm-hmm. because now it's like you know you might be sleeping she'll yeah she might be sleeping she'll I'm she'll a, go I'm on her I'm gonna make an interesting point to y'all yeah I'm gonna make an interesting point I have a I I have a guy I used to know he uh he had gotten to the porno business. He actually went to Silicon Valley and all that. He got into adult, adult entertainment. And um, I caught up with him and his wife a few years ago. And, you know, we just chit-chatting and stuff. And, you know, he, you know, I, I tell him, like, you know, you know, you do your work and stuff. And, you know, don't, do you get bored of, you know, having sex and everything? He was like, you know, it's not as glamorous as, you know, the movies and stuff make. You know, it's a lot of editing and stuff. <laughs> but what he always told me is, is that, you know, I asked him, you know, what's your favorite, you know, who was your favorite chick or what was your favorite movie? He's like, I, actually, I like all of them. And I'm like, every last one? He said, yeah. You know, if I don't like them, then I won't put them out. Or I will have them redo it and make sure that it's good. So my point to you is, is that for you fellas out there and for you women out there who like sexting and sending pictures to each other, you know, of your privates and, you know, your tits Jelly. and, you know, all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You like sending you like sending mm-hmm. that stuff out there. Sending make sure it looks correct. You know what I mean? <laughs> make sure it looks correct. <laughs> looks proper. Because all if right. you guys out there you send this stuff, make make sure you make sure your stuff is correct when you send it to them chicks. Because if some if it gets into the wrong hands, you know what I mean, you're gonna have to talk about it, pay about it. You don't know what you know, exactly. you better hope you can be like, Well, hey, you know. Speaking of things not looking proper, let's get to another random, because, you know, we always do random news. Hashtag another random, hashtag random hashtag rant is uh, <laughs> people people that, that post these pictures of your food or your dinner on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. I hate that. Please, I please make that. sure it looks edible, because some of y'all look like dog food. 
Stop. Looks like Stop. trash. It looks say, oh, it's a cheeseburger and fries. We don't know what in the world it is. Hey. Please, if you can't hey. cook, if it doesn't look well, don't post it. Check, Just put up check. a status and say what you cooked, and that's it. <laughs> Don't post us any photos. Don't tweet any pictures. Check. Please. Check, check, check. Oh, my God. I, I got one thing to say for that. And, I got and, one thing and, to say and we're, that. We're getting an under the radio text. Uh, Car- Carmel girls say, yes, so true. Preach, tech, preach. Uh, Mr. Eric Hughes says, oh, national security was okay, but it wasn't all that. I agree with you, NFC Game Boy. You like my chili? So. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to put that person out, though, but that chili did so look like, it, uh, look some, you know what? <laughs> does, it, does it go with the focus? <laughs> I, look, Tank, and I was eating and, and I almost threw up. I almost threw up when I saw that. I was eating. NFC Game Boy, <laughs> your thoughts on the, the pictures of food on <laughs> social media before us. we bring in Shane Strickland. Did, did the NFC Game uh, Boy go away? Or does he not have words? NFC Game Boy? I think I think what it is is oh, that did. when you are sitting up there and I, I was I was chewing that's why, but uh, oh, <laughs> when you got when you got pictures you <laughs> of your food up there and you're trying to be edible and you're trying to get get likes and stuff get thumbs, you know what I mean? You know it, it'd probably be best to show something that you know maybe like a cake or uh you know like maybe like a birthday cake or a wedding cake you know something that's supposed to be extravagant not what you're getting ready to eat like oh I'm getting ready to eat this who who cares about what you're getting ready to eat like really yes like we like, yes. you want you want likes that bad that you want people to pay attention to just to your meal cuz you you know you made uh barbecue chicken and corn cob and green beans and you put it nice and properly on your plate and then you sat there and took a picture of it just to upload and say oh this is what I'm having for dinner you really that lonely? <laughs> like, like, oh, or that like, thirsty? That? Yeah, you, are you that thirsty? Like, really? And then they, they have the food, but they don't have nothing to drink next to it. So you're just going to eat, you know what I mean? Exactly. They don't have no seasoning on anything. Fries, on no salt, got no got pepper next drink. to it. Well, you, yeah, made, this you know big plate of look, made this big plate of linguine and had like a little high sea box. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, fan is texting say, uh, Game Boy, what are you smashing on? What am I smashing on? <laughs> Fans, Cinnamon if you don't know, crunch. smashing is smashing means eating. Okay, cinnamon toast crunch. Cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, cinnamon toast crunch. I have now, a friend, friend who yeah, hates that because too. of one thing. Shit, what do you <laughs> like? That? It seems like everything we like, you hate. You are a bacon hater. No, no, no. You like cinnamon toast I like, crunch. I like cinnamon toast <laughs> Crunch. No, I I like wait wait tech. I like the crunch. The reason why she hates cinnamon toast crunch because of the commercials of the squares eating each other. She would not eat cinnamon toast crunch. If she would freak out if I was eating in front of her. Eating no, you talking about Mama, Mama Shy? No, I'm talking you're about talking a friend of mine in Baltimore. Yeah, no, my uh-huh. mom likes cinnamon toast crunch. Um, <laughs> but. To tell you the truth, I agree with all of you. I mean, food, I think you're pretty desperate. And plus, when you put food together and looks nicely, don't mean it tastes good. Because some people can put a plop of shit together, and it can taste good. And then they can put a masterpiece together, and it tastes horrible. I don't, I don't want to know. If you want to post something that you want to put some hashtag food pics on Facebook or Twitter... Do some Kool Aid or something. Is is certain yeah, Kool Aid? Is certain when you eat certain foods and certain things just that you have to when you fix dinner, your beverage has to match. So if you're making steak and potatoes, drinking Kool Aid and high sea boxes that, that doesn't go well. I ain't saying to have wine or like soda or something. Like you know, who drinks lemonade while eating crabs? With certain things, does have to match. Even when you go to a restaurant, they'll even 
they'll even offer or recommend certain wine or certain beverages to go with your meal. You know Not happy by the sips. That don't sound, oh, God, that's a ghetto drink right there, sips. Oh, sip, hey, little, hey, hold on uh, now. Don't, don't knock hey, sips, man. Sips, yeah, sips, 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 sips was the truth back in the day. Yeah, they I was saying, hold on. Sips back in the day, boo. I see about you. Or when you on a field trip. <laughs> did, did y'all have those in Hawaii, Shane? Did y'all uh, have sips in Hawaii? Uh, I don't remember. I just remember, uh, like, like uh, Hawaiian punch, not to throw a literal term. Hawaiian punch, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Sunny Delight, which is horrible now. Yeah, uh, Donald Duck. Yeah, it does. Juice. It does taste bad now. Yeah, it Donald does. Duck. Donald 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 Duck. Uh, wings mm. a lot, man. With that being said, fans, hey. we're gonna bring in. <laughs> we're gonna bring in on that uh, our guest, uh, our, our good old buddy, personally and professionally, the man himself, newly signed to the Lucha Underground. Our good buddies and helpers, the man himself, Shane Square Strickland. Welcome to Under the Mat Radio. What's good, guys? What's going on? Hey, yo. What's going on now? Now. What do you want to? You, we, we had you on before, and I, you know, can we call you Shane? Is that cool? Or do you want to be called Swerve? Uh, call me whatever you feel, man. Um, call me Swerve, just so the people know. You know, get that, keep pushing that name as much as possible. <laughs> Got you. Now, Swerve, <laughs> as you heard, uh, you know, we do here. We talk about wrestling and pop culture, a lot of random news. We were just talking about the best cereals. Um, if you can take us back. When you were a little four kid, a little four kid swerve, what were some of the best cereals, your favorite cereals growing up? Well, I pretty much still eat them. Like, I, I still pretty much still eat that cereal now. They just, like, revamped it. But, like, my favorite was, like, when they had um, the, when they was making tricks and they actually had the the shapes of the fruit. Yeah. Tree. Now they have little balls. And that kind of pissed me off. I mean, that, you know how, how mad that upset me. I was like, oh. Like, <laughs> that's like that's like taking that's like taking um runts and turning them into spree. Right. <laughs> I'm like, you took all the fun out of eating my favorite cereal. Now I'm upset. So, but I still it, eat it, it Still tastes it, the same. It's it's sad because real quick um. Be, we was we was around some little four kids at a show. And if the game we wasn't with us, we, uh, Shin was and uh, our, our bodyguard Ghetto Tony. And you know, these little four kids was talking about cereal. And a little kid asked me, "Hey, look at the new tricks. Talk. Look at how tricks is new." And I said, uh, "No, that's not new." So they got the kids thinking that the shapes is the new form, but really that was the original. Because all they knew was about the little fruity balls, the little colorful balls. And now they brought the shapes back. Yeah. (laughs) So you got the kids now thinking that the shapes are the new and improved when that was the original. And and that's just blasphemy to me. That's just absurd. (laughs) Our generation is doomed. I basically call them fruity kicks. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me. uh, I gotta say before we before we move on with this, shout out to Ghetto Tony because that's one of his favorite road trip uh, uh, snacks and everything. But you know, I do have a similar rant. I'm sorry, I'm getting interference. Uh, Hello. Yeah, we did. Uh, Shane, we we got. Uh, so I, Shane, you yeah, I'm good. Yep, I'm good. Okay. Oh, okay. You had a club? Um, I. <laughs> Shane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we just want to make sure you heard. We heard some music and stuff in the background. We we'll make sure we still got you. Oh yeah, I'm in the gym, man. I'm still pumping out legs as we speak. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. Right. Don't stop the flow. I can hear the metal clinking. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, go ahead, Shane. You, I know you had a question before we move on. 
No, no, no. I mean, you know, talk about cereals that change and everything like that. I was going to go on something else that changed that I uh, couldn't stand was called Skittles. Oh, there's like a thousand and, Skittles now. Well, <laughs> the regular Skittles, like now, I used to grow up on Skittles uh, and Marshawn's Skittles. Uh, you know, cross-eyed beast mode. Uh, but, but now they changed it to hate now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. With that being said, we're going to NFC Game Boy. Yeah. Um, yeah, NFC Game Boy, you start on us. Well, my, my question to you is, first of all, congratulations. Secondly, what is what is what is uh what is your opinion of Lucha Underground compared uh, to the other uh, uh promotions and stuff out there? What is your opinion of it? Um, it's revolutionary. They're seeing, they're showing um, pro, it's not just pro wrestling. It's showing entertainment value of wrestling in a whole different vision, which is always which is always good. Like you know, it's, when everybody brings out a new product or whatever. When it's a, when everybody brings out a new product, it's pretty much mimics something that they've already seen before. So it's like, oh, it's just like this, or oh, it's kind of just like uh, something we've seen before a couple of years ago called this. Well, this is like um, actual directors. Like they have Robert Rodriguez, the director of the, who's one of the executive producers um, of the show, who directed um, Sin City. So he's his mm-hmm. vision of it is being shown in a whole new light. The cinematics is phenomenal. The talent, the, the the guys, the staff is just top notch. Those guys are like constantly working. The writers are constantly writing um, different views, and they're not all stuck in like the same um, vision. You know, like say they had something written and it's supposed to go A B C, and if B doesn't work, they just still force it down the throat. It doesn't work like that over there. It's like they see what's working with the crowd or how the um, how the Reaction of how the audience is uh, mm-hmm. who are watching on t- at home, they'll go a different route. They play by ear, which is really great, especially seeing how everything works so well, and they're able to switch gears like that. That's just phenomenal, phenomenal work, you know. Uh, um, I think it's a great, and it's a great alternative to television right now. Sure, sounds good. Now, what what do you want to see? And I'm sure you was a fan of Leecher and <clears throat> let you know, um, Swerve, that um, we represented Leecher well. You know, we, we've had uh, Krista Joseph and Eric Van Wegman, and we also had Ricky Graves on the show as well. Um, now we have you on as the new addition. What will you bring different to Leecher Underground that hasn't been seen before? Uh, bring a... There's, like, I will say... They have a gritty side. They have a gritty side to it, to the show, which is um, something different that not a lot of other companies are doing. They're not bringing that gritty side. Uh, no, a lot, all these companies aren't bringing that gritty side to it. While being underground and showing how dark the show can get, but also how light it can get. Uh, I feel like where I stand, I can play a good medium to that, the dark and the light side. You know, I feel like my style of of um, in ring is a lot different, it's, I, which I feel like I've always prided myself on being very a hybrid type. I can kind of like shuffle in between each style. Like when it comes to working with a working with like a submission style, an aerial style, and a striking style, I'm always been mm-hmm. able to morph into whatever match type I'm put into, even hardcore as needed be. So I feel like I show I can I provide that. The, pretty much the hybrid style of it and the character which I don't want to expose too much of my character that I'll be playing on the show yet because like it'll probably be airing in about a couple, four or five episodes so I don't want to expose too much of it but the way that okay. my character is set up it's definitely going to bring another like it, I'm not saying I add I, of course I add something to the show but I'm not saying I'm changing the show you know I'm just saying like it adds an interesting plot into it. You know, it's just like when you have that water and you add that just a little bit of dye, that water starts changing. 
into a different color. Mm. So I feel like that's what I am. I'm just a little dab of like a guy that's going to start morphing the rest of the <laughs> glass of water. Kind of like those little water Technology. packets, the little packets to put water now. Exactly. <laughs> well, real quick, before we turn it over to Shen, is were you following each on the ground? Who would you say would you feel <clears throat> would be Swerve's biggest opponent, opponent, the most toughest opponent? Uh, Prince Puma, hands down. Mm. I always mm-hmm. go for, I always go for like the 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 top guy. That's how I am. Uh, whoever's the the biggest dog in the yard, I want to take him down. You know, so I had either I can be just as good or better. And it's not a stick at him. It's just like you know, I'm a competitive person, and that shows all about competition. You know, so and like me and Puma are good buddies outside of Lucha Underground, so we have that competitive relationship, friendly competitive relationship as it is. So bringing that onto a national TV screen will just make it more fun for us and the show and the viewers all together. Okay. That's wonderful. Shimbley. Well, I have to say that um, I did look at your matches on uh, YouTube, and one of my favorite matches uh, that I've seen was you and Ricochet, uh, which, which some people know is Puma on Lucha Underground, you know, by the tattoos and everything. But um, can you can you take us to the feeling when they called you up? Like, can you take us through that when they called you up and, uh, you know, you went down and tried it out? Can you tell us in detail how did, how did that go? Was it intimidating? Uh, for, of, over to Lucha? Yes. Um, it wasn't actually intimidating at all. I was actually really comfortable. I, it's not too many times I get nervous anymore. You know, it's more like I'm more, I get more anxious and excited. It's excitement that I feel, not nerves anymore. Because, like, at, at this point, it's like I'm riding a bike. Now, at this point, can you ride a bike in, on television? Can you ride a bike in front of this many people? You know what I mean? It's still riding a bike. There's no reason to be nervous riding a bike anymore. So that's how I feel about it at this moment. But the process was awesome because everybody treated you like you've already been there. They treated you like a star. It's not like answering to promoters and um, Mm -hmm. bookers anymore. I'm answering to producers and writers now. So it's not like sleazy and like um, two-faced. They're very supportive. They want your input on things. They want to know your feedback. They want to see how you feel about this. If you're not comfortable, they're not going to force it down your throat. They want to see, they want to know, does this work for you? Does this, do you feel comfortable doing this? Do you think you can go this route with it? If we change it up, do you think you can do this with it? Do you feel comfortable? You know, they're always wanting to know if you're comfortable on screen doing what they ask you to do or doing something that they're pitching to you. Um, the first person I met the first person I met off the plane was uh, Conan, and mm. um, so that was really cool. Like we've been emailing back and forth, but I never really talked to him. So him, like putting, giving me his praise, saying like, "Hey man, this is your time. Let's kill it. Do your stuff. Show him why you're here. Let's make it happen, bro. You know, I've been putting in my work. Now it's time to put in your work." So that getting that kind of support from him was huge. And then being in the ring with the guys, um, like I, one of my dark matches. I did a multi multi man scramble and Hernandez was in the match. And he was a rich sort of guy. He was really talented, just really um smart as well, offering a lot of veteran advice. Especially going from like independent independent style wrestling to T V wrestling. He offered his good advice. Right. He didn't want to change anything I do. He just wanted to make sure I did it right. You know? Yeah. So yeah. all the praise goes to Hernandez in that regard. But like I, I felt like I fit in right away. And, like, John Morrison offered, like, just like, yo, man, the stuff you did this weekend was great. So, like, it's really good stuff, man, just awesome. Hearing it from him, hearing it from Chavo, hearing it from El, uh, Alberto Patron, just hearing the, those, like, praises from those guys, knowing that they're watching and they're praising you and they're not, like, walking away like, ah, whatever. They're, like, watching. They want to see the product as a whole. Just everybody do well, from the dark matches to the finish to the main event. They want to see everything go right. well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shame, shame okay. Lady, you know, right. I apologize if I'm breathing too hard. I'm still working out as I'm talking to you guys. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, 
uh, NFC game. I got to say, though, that... Uh, Jack, uh, of course, Shane. I got to say that... Um, I got to say that, really, that Shane gave us a little spoiler there. He was telling uh, us that he was working with Hernandez, who has, who has not been featured on the show yet. Well, that was in dark matches, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there's, also, sure. there's a lot of other there's a lot of other dark match guys that I haven't even exposed yet. So you'll be seeing a lot of names that I haven't even even put out there yet that will be debuting on the show. Okay. Oh, good. Good. Oh, um, yeah. Talk about if you can. Uh, we 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 seen you work around different um, different promotions all over. Um, working in the temple at Lucha. Is there a different feel working there? How does the does the ring feel different? Did you did you have to adjust your wrestling style at all, as opposed to other places? Uh, the the ring is a lot bigger. I will say that. Like um, on the independent, you'll usually work an average of sixteen foot, eighteen foot. This one's twenty, so it's an extra two feet. So that's an extra step you'd have to take in the ring to get to the other side. So you gotta make sure your feeding are right. You know like crossing the ring, especially if you're about to gather and dive. So the ring is a lot mm-hmm. bigger, but it's a lot, like, it's not a bad um, fall to the ring. You know, it's, you feel like everything is, like, put in the right place. It's just Now, like, I wouldn't say being in the temple, like, it's great. It's a great feel because the way they have the audience set up, it's like a coliseum, so the fans go up and look down on you instead of, like, all the fans looking at level at most indie right. shows. You know, so, like, the audience, the sound goes straight down into the ring. So now you're hearing it extra loud instead of hearing the, the sound go all over the place, you know. So the cameras, on the camera, on camera, it's, like, so much louder in there. And the fans get into everything. They're, they don't boo unless, they, they don't boo, like, bad stuff that you see in the ring. Like, they, just, they boo the bad guys. They cheer the good guys. They are really, really, they're really warming. I love the fans. The fans are there. It's really easy, and it's really, it's great love that they show, and it's a good feeling knowing, like, as soon as, as soon as the person enters the temple, they know who they are. So they, and it's cool seeing like other the the, fan, the kids wearing the replica masks of their favorite characters. It's a really, really good feeling. Um, the cameras being there for the cameras, the cameras catching all this stuff. There's like 20 cameras, like on the temple. So like. Everything you do is caught on camera, and it's HD camera, so it's really cool seeing, sitting in the back watching how they, what they're catching, and then being in the ring and like, oh, you stand here, this camera's gonna catch you, like this camera's gonna catch you, you know, it's just a really awesome feeling. Wow. All right. No. Um. Yes. Yeah, so it's of course, um, just revealed, I believe on TV, of course, did it sign Del Rio, or Al Patron. Um, what are your thoughts on Del Rio as a worker, and what are your um, thoughts on being able to hopefully to work with from down the line under the same company? Um, I've always felt like Del Rio was a tremendous talent to be added anywhere. Like on TV, you, when he was comfortable and when he was happy and when he was had all this momentum, he was, nobody could touch him. As far as being like a top guy, a top heel, a top babyface, no matter what they wanted him to do, and in ring style, like everything was, he was just there. And then, like n- near the end of his run in WWE, you saw like he wasn't happy, and it started showing in his in ring performance a little bit because it's just you, you know when you're not happy, you just it, it can show, it can, you can see it. Now, him entering the temple, it's just so cool to see it. Like he's he has a fire back. You know, he has a fire and he's mo- his momentum is back. And he's feeling it, and he's like having a good time. Um, he's just killing it all over again. Um, I've actually talked to Del Rio a little, oh, Peltron a little bit while I was there, and after the after the filmings were over, he actually came and hang out, hung out with a lot of us too. So it's also really cool that he's like he's one of the boys now. You don't being there, you don't get that feeling like oh, this is the top guy, you don't talk to the top guy, you don't enter the top guy's dressing room, you don't, like, interrupt the top guy, it's not that feeling. Everybody's one. You know, the boys hang out together, they talk together, they want, they work together, they want to see everybody succeed, and they will tell you what they see on television or see what you do is wrong, and they'll let you know, and they'll help, they don't badger you, they don't put you down, they uplift you, 
it's a very uplifting feeling that everybody's working for the working to see this product succeed very well. Okay. Can it's a game boy? Well, let me ask you something. You know, with with all these great things uh coming about with you being at Lucha, you know, all the other promotions Especially with the top guy, Day Day E, you know, they, they treat uh, colored guys, you know, really, really crazy. And we've been talking about this the last couple of weeks with the, 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 how sorry the product is becoming, especially with, with uh, you know, uh, black guys. Um, tell us your uh, opinion of just how good, not just being a wrestler, but being a, 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 a black wrestler and how good it is that you're actually at a promotion where you're being valued not by the color of your skin but by, you know, your performance. You know, give, give us some insight, you know, to that. Um, it's, it's very much appreciated. You know, um, I, I, I definitely don't see any color barriers here, but I have seen color barriers, not just in WWE, but I've seen it everywhere else. You know, like an African-American star can only get so far. You know, um, like, my, my thing was, my thing was, when I got, when I started, like, when I started wrestling, and I started getting more up into, like, different ranks of the independent scene, I didn't want to be perceived as a black character. You know, I didn't want to be perceived as an African-American character. Like, not saying, like, I wanted, didn't want to be like, oh, I'm not African-American. I didn't want to be representing African race. I didn't want to be perceived. Like, I didn't want to go out rapping. I didn't want to come out to hip-hop music. I didn't want to come out wrestling in jeans or sneakers or have a do-rag on. I didn't want to do any of that. I wanted to be like, this is uh, Shane Strickland. This is somebody who, this is international swerve, Shane Strickland. This isn't the from the streets of... Uh, Philadelphia, or from this, or the moniker right. of like that that dude. I'm like, no, I don't want any of that because when I want people to see me, I want them to see me as a person of just. Oh, I want to see them as a performer, not oh, he's a black wrestler. No, that's not what I am. I'm me. I'm African American, and I appreciate my African American side, but you're not going to see me rapping to the ring. You know, I didn't want to do that, but now, like. It seems like that's the only way that certain African Americans can be perceived on camera and understood and connected with. They feel that is that is the way, but it's not always the case. Like, oh, when they see this guy, oh, because like they see like uh, a character, they want to, uh, um, they want to, they want to, um, they want you to recognize them as soon as you see them. Like, um, I would say, even I, I'll go outside of African American. I'll say uh, when Drew McIntyre was in WWE, what did they make him? A Scottish character. They didn't have to make him like a Irish or Scottish character, but that's what they made him. Like uh, Seamus, they made him a Irish character. They didn't have to make him Irish. They could have made him something, anything else. And then he just happened it's to true. be Irish. You know? Why couldn't they go that route? Why couldn't they make, like, if Randy Orton was Australian, would he still be Randy Orton? Or would he be nope. Aussie on a boomerang down to the ring? You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's the kind of things I think about. Not just race, but nationality. I understand they have to connect to you. I understand that. But they don't have to connect to, to connect to you on... Like, what they're doing with Finn Balor is perfect. Right. They, like, mm-hmm. In NXT, Finn Balor does not have... Oh, yeah. He doesn't have an Irish character. He's Finn Balor. You know, that is perfect. You know, Sami Zayn is Canadian. He's Canadian, but they don't put a maple leaf on his tight. That's a good point. They are going, they're they're, they're proceeding, yeah, they're proceeding their race. They're proceeding their nationality. You know, they're proceeding that. And now I'm just waiting for the African American to do do the same thing. For a while, Big E did did that. And I was really, really rooting for that. Big E wasn't a black character. He was just a big, big, powerful guy. He wasn't, he did, they didn't put a chain on him. They didn't have him, like, 
be anything outside of like his race, you know, that catered to do his race. They just had him being a big, powerful, strong man. But now they put him here, and now he's proceeding his race. And I'm, I'm uh, one thing I will say about the character. One thing I will say about the character I'll be preparing in Lucha Underground is not preceding my race. I'm playing a character that has nothing to do with my nationality or any nationality. I'm portraying, I'm portraying a character that is a character. In that way, it doesn't That's limit you at all. <clears throat> exactly. I don't have limits to what I can do. I can go any way I want to, you know. Same with, like, guys like Finn Balor. Same thing with guys like Sami Zayn, who don't, are... Like, Sami Zayn wouldn't have won, probably wouldn't have won the NXT title or anything like that if he was just playing a character, like a racial or national, nationality type character. But now he's just being himself, and now he has more freedom, free range to do, go anywhere as far as creative goes. I definitely do agree with that. I definitely do. Well, um,. He didn't make a point about black characters because, really, you know, guys, we talk about the media all the time and how much we dislike it, but <clears throat> what about our truth I mean, he's done the Another same thing. Another guy like that, too. 15, 15, 16 years, and then now he brings back, whoop, there it is, that's like 20 years old. <laughs> and it was like, it was like, when I heard it, I was with uh, friends of Under the Mat, you know, Sherelle and Janae, shout out to them. And we just heard, whoop, there it is. I'm like, what is this, 1994? Vince writing our truth rap. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Vince McMahon writing our truth raps now, just like Roman Reigns' bad promos. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, just, it's just terrible. And and uh, my question to you, uh, Swerve, is I don't know this, but what was the what was the origin of Swerve and international Swerve? Um. Origin, uh, the swerve thing came because, like, I was in the car with, like, Rich Swan, and um, we were, um, we were just, I had my phone on in the, aux- in the auxiliary port, and I just playing my music, and um, that's around the time when um, Mercy, with the good music, came out, and um, Big Sean always said swerve in the chorus of it, and I thought that was really hot. I just thought it was fresh. I was like, oh, the way he says that is just really smooth, you know? And it was like I was I was big on putting S's. Anything that was an S, I would like run with. So I felt like Shane Swerve Strickland would be really cool. And the meaning behind Swerve was everybody was picking swag, and it felt like a style thing, like walking with style. So I used Swerve oh. and made it Swerve walking with confidence. Because after okay. a while, I started being getting more confident, and not only what I was like doing in the like doing in the ring, but at how I was portraying myself. I wasn't like a cocky character, I was a confident character, you know, mm-hmm. and um, so I took that and ran with it. International Swerve is when, like, I started doing all these overseas tours in Mexico and Europe and Germany, and I was a heel character in CZW at the time, and I felt like I really, that's when I started becoming an arrogant character, and I felt like throwing that out there, putting that as a, as a label, was the most arrogant I could possibly be. You know, that's a uh, like putting a label on anything on yourself, like, oh, I'm not just for it anymore. Call me the international for it. Oh, just because you're oh, okay. overseas? Yeah, yeah, right. that's exactly why. I'm an international star, and you can't take that away from me. I've done it, and I've succeeded at it. So now I'm just going to throw it in there and rub it in your face about it. <laughs> you know? It was like a, it was like a, um, like the, there's a lot of heel characters that play that arrogant character that are so, that are so um, blatant with what they try to do. And I wasn't trying to be as blatant. I was trying to be like, um, it was blatant, but it wasn't forceful. It was like a, it was like that, um, the guy that leaves that backhanded compliment. It was just like mm-hmm. a subtle. It was a subtle arrogance about me that constantly grew to like a more arrogant, a big arrogance, you know. Like I wouldn't say, up. Oh, I wouldn't say the best in the world, Shane Strickland, because that's just blatant to me. International slurs. Like, why do you say international? Because I'm an international star. Like, oh, like, damn, he kind of is right, but he's not right. But he is right. (laughs) You know? (laughs) So it's like, damn, you got to respect it, but at the same time, you don't like it. But you have to respect it. Right. 
<clears throat> anybody that backs yeah. up, anybody that can, anybody that can back up their trash talk is hated. Amen. Mm. Mm. If you think about Good that, question. anybody who back, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Amen. Sorry. I like that. I like, I like that. that, Shane. I like that. Get that on the shirt. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's 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 yeah. that's me all day. <laughs> yep. Really? That's why I'm. Yeah, that's why I'm constantly hated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot it's of people like, hate you. It's just happens. It happens on a regular basis. You doing anything right, you are supposed to have a lot of haters. Oh yeah. You don't. Well, that means progress. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, swerve. Wherever you can, um, let us know how it was. I know me and you talked off air before you made the announcement you were going to Mexico. Um, ex- explain what that process was like. How did you enjoy working with Mexico? And how was it working? How was it like working in Mexico? This is working in the states. Um, language barrier, big time. Uh, definitely language barrier, I would say. But um, the process went with like um, it was a year, the year before. Um, Rich Swan went over there and killed it. And while he was over there, he was ca- constantly putting my name over, putting, putting my name over to the people about like, hey, Shane Strickland, man, you really gotta check him out. And they're like, okay. And then I meet, I message them, and they were just like, oh, okay, maybe we'll think, we'll think about it. Then after a year went by, I start, I won the CZW wide title, I started doing well because they love CZW over in Mexico. They were like, oh, Shane, um, maybe in May come over. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So it worked out something, I ended up going over there. But the language barrier, i say, was the most difficult. And, like, that was the first time I really had to wrestle in tours. So we, like, wrestle a match in Guadalajara and then get on the tour bus and drive six hours through the night on the tour bus and get to the city, next city. You didn't have a shower. You didn't have, like, um, a bed to sleep in. You slept on the bus. And then you get up and then get ready for your match. Like we really, we literally slept in the ring before the shows, and then woke up. Like, get get your stuff together, make sure you don't have any knots or anything in your back. Get in there, run a match with six Mexicans that don't speak English. <laughs> so, uh, do this: get up, get on the bus, head to the next city, do the same thing over and over again. But like, what I liked about it is, is that this, just that um um you bonded with those guys. Like, not a, not a lot of, like, they, like, sometimes, I've heard stories about, like, Mexicans not really liking, like, Americans, but um, I felt like that was definitely different with me when I went there because, like, they play, they, they have little jokes that they keep in, like, that they'd have, and they would try to include me in jokes, and I've always went with the jokes, you know, so, like, <laughs> I built that camaraderie with them. Instead of fighting them, I was like, oh, yes, yes, and I'd run with the joke with them, and, like, oh, yes, yes. and they just all laugh, the whole locker room would laugh, so, like, they felt like I was a part of them. You know, we were more of a family together in the little time that I was there. You know, so I felt like that was what helped me. And, like, guys would, like, just, uh, off, like help me out. Or, they, like, they just they were just really, really, hum- they were really, really, um, they were just really generous, I would say. Generous in the, hosp- generous in the hospitality that, that they offered was amazing. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you can't let us know the ideas before we let you go, I'm a real big fan of your shirts. I know you um, have different kind of shirts out. Um, let us know. Do you have any more ideas of any shirts coming out with um, with your name on it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, um, on ProWrestlingTees.com, I have a store. Um, they still have the old designs on. But the new designs have been made. Now they just need to be put on the website very soon, and they will be up very, very, very soon. And um, the idea, like, if you, if you watch the show The Boondock, you'll see, yeah. like, a Boondock-style caricature of mine with my name on it. And um, I have the SpongeBob. I love that one. Swir- the SpongeBob Swerve Pants style one come, uh, coming on the <laughs> website. So that would be a good way. <laughs> and I have a, web- and I have a, a Swerve Strickland website coming soon as well. A swerve what? A uh, website. So you can catch, um, you can go right to my website, order shirts, and it'll link you to my shirts right there. Order them right from there. Uh, my Twitter, my Instagram, uh, and upcoming matches I'll be having. You can um, click the link. You'll be able to click the link and watch Lucha Underground straight from my website. 
Mm. Mm. All right. With that being said, go ahead. Let us know your uh, Twitter, your Instagram, all your information in case anybody needs to get a hold of you and I'll plug anything that you need. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at under under at Strickland Chain. That I uh, repeat at Strickland Chain is just my name backwards. Um, you'll be able to go to my pro wrestling tees and um, order some of my shirts. Um, so just go to the pro wrestling tees and type in Shane. Or actually, find my shirt, find my store under Shane Strickland. We have a couple of designs there that you can order at any time. Um, Website will be coming soon. New designs for my t-shirts will be coming soon. And also check out Lucha Underground Wednesday nights on the L Ray Network at 8, 8, 8, 8 o'clock. <clears throat> All right. All right. And swear we thank you much coming again on the show, being a great guest as usual. We can't wait to see you on TV on the L Ray, or L Ray Network. And we definitely uh, give you all props and congratulations for that, man. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that, guys. Thank you. All right, Mikey, take boy. care. No I just want to say, just want to say, take care, man. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate that. All right, All thanks, right. man. Thank you. Everybody that was Shane for Strickland, current new sign talent of Leech Underground, also international star. Seen on, seen his work at uh, many different promotions all around. Very great mm-hmm. work in the ring. Not saying it because we are all, we're further from outside of the business, but I even, even thought of that even before we start becoming cool, so I'm glad for him. He definitely deserves it. Um, if he doesn't put on, if not the best match, it has to be the second best match on any card that he's on. Now, um, NFC Game Boy and Shin, your, your thoughts of an uh, interview with Shane Sir Strickland? Well, I just want to say that, man, it's a long time coming. I've been a big fan of uh, Shane, you know, for a good while for over a year, uh, knowing his work and stuff, especially when I'm going down to uh, Mexico. I'm glad that we brought that up. I was wondering about that. But, yeah, man, you know, he, he's good, man. You know what I mean? He, he's definitely somewhere where, you know, he can really make an impact. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy for him. Congratulations. Shin? Um... You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I just met the man right about November, and I YouTubed a lot of his matches. And I'm I'm pretty much a big fan from seeing the Ricochet matches because, uh, you know, as we said all the time about New Day and our truth and whatever else is stereotypical in blacks and wrestling, I have been uh, a fan of his, and I, and I pray so, so much for the sake of him and his family that he doesn't come up with a sellout character that, you know, they just throw him money and everything, and and I pray that so much. Yeah, we do. And, you know, the Shin, we're glad that you got a got a chance to meet him. Uh, me and the Sing Game Boy definitely know him for a while. Um, but then over a year or so at different shows, and I was put on a great match. Uh, definitely um, one of the matches of the year, uh, him versus AR Fox at EWE. Um, that happened just uh, the end of last year. Um, and big shout out to Heavy J from On Go Wrestling who was there, and Ghetto Tony. Uh, one of the best matches I've seen. Um, and anybody knows how much wrestling tech is, tech does watch or seen over the years. One of the best matches I've seen in a long time. So big ups to Swerve Strickland and Ar Fox um, for that match. With with that, and then getting to see the taking a little breath. Right. That match, yo, I, I can only imagine. I wish I had the chance to see it, you know what I mean, with him and A.R. Fox. But I know that, you know, he he brought down the house, and that's he's at a place where he's not only. You, you were there. Huh? NFC Game Boy, I, I you was there. there. I was there, but that's when NFC Game Boy was going out there to get something to eat. So oh, I okay, seen it, yeah. but, I mean, smashing yeah. I smashing was smashing again? Going. Yeah, I was smashing. So I seen, but you know what I mean. You know, I didn't. I came into like toward the the end part of it. You know what I mean, I saw the match, but I didn't see the whole entire match. But, uh, <clears throat> yes, just... um, before we before we bring in a, a special caller, one of our regular callers, um, uh, Chance Young, that wants to talk on a serious note about real quick his bully experience in about ten minutes. Um, do you thank everybody for calling in and all the texts that Under the Mat Radio does get? Um, Thank everybody for uh, coming on and listening for our special 
um, segment we had earlier today with Carrie and um, her daughter, Rennie, very touching subject. Um, you know, a lot of people did have experienced bullying, so we had Under the Mat Radio. You know, we like to laugh and joke, and we're very fun all over the show that their covers for wrestling and pop culture and mixed martial arts. But, you know, they're all t- time and place for everything, and we have no problem with covering very serious issues. So with that being said, I'm going to bring in right now, um, mm-hmm. Hey, about two minutes, bringing now uh, Chan Chung. Um, you there, buddy? Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah. Hello, yeah, much. Um, well, Rook. first, Rook. I get I'll go back. To, before I get to what I was going to talk about, first, tonight at 9 o'clock, Amish Mafia is coming back on for the final season, which, you know, those guys are crazy down here in Lancaster. Um, all right, so oh, my, my story is okay. for, for bullying is that I was at um, Franklin Middle, and I was just walking in the, in one of the areas of school, and, of course, Franklin Middle is really big, and half of the teachers don't even know their students. I mean, no joke there. Um but when I was about to go back to home room in the afternoon, I got beaten on the back. I got called a loser. And, and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I even got the middle finger flipped at me from another guy on my bus. And then things taken away from me, like my journal, like my, uh, my math class journal or whatever. And... I kept trying to fight and fight and try to get it back, but I didn't, like, I, you know, punch or anything because that was when I couldn't really fight back to, you know, say, like, I did say give it back to me, but he never responded, and then the music teacher, he was just a pain in the butt. But when the kid, when one kid was beating on my back, I just, like, hunched over like I was in a turtle shell. I just couldn't. I I just couldn't, you know, stop him because I didn't feel like wanting to, you know, punch him. That was then. Now, I'm against bullying. And bullying, guys, everybody that's listening, you got to stop bullying. It's every single day. Either if you're a student at school, a person at college, or at work, it's got to stop. But um, I'm actually in a group called Disability Express Group. And it was it just started between me, my girlfriend, and our two friends, Bob and Brian, who have autism. And at their school, they went to, because they went to King Krieger. And they've seen bullying, and I've seen bullying, and my girlfriend has too. And we came together and we said, hey, why don't we do this group? And right now, our group has grown since the last year's summer. And, I mean, we've gotten up to, like, maybe 40 members now from over the past year. Because wow. they heard about us on the WJZ News, uh, ABC News. And we were actually in Eldersburg at the Hot Keto place that was filmed of last year from those guys that came to talk to us. And we actually went to a school called East Middle School in, uh, in Eldersburg, and we gave them a big check. We talked to their students about stopping bullying, and right after when we left, we actually left a big impression onto those on those students and to the teachers. And till this day, those guys have not had any bullying, just because. Hey. Just because those four members, me, my girlfriend, and my our friends, Bob and Brian, we made a difference for those guys. And until this day, we are still making a difference. But anyways, that, but that's good. Back Actually, to the, we want to thank you for that. We, we want to commend you, um, Chance, for for commend, uh, for sharing that and letting us know. Yeah. All right. Um, now, real quick, actually, give you about. 30 seconds left, buddy. Um, would you, uh, what else did you want to cover? All right. Well, if you guys would like, the Disability Express Group actually has a Facebook page called the Disability Express Group. 
like us on Facebook. Um, in fact, you can message me or whatever, and I can tell you a little bit more about them. Um, ACW, March 13th, the winners versus Riot City is going to be nuts. GEW, Global Extreme Wrestling Company, it's been rising to the top. I even have my own like page now, and I I have at least about 16 likes already. If you look up on General Thunderstorm like page, I'll even send out, you know, the post about it tonight on Facebook, and you guys can like it. I'm, and the reason why I'm calling General Thunderstorm is because a great man called, called Andy Weinberg, he has changed my life a lot. And he can change yours. All right, guys. All right, man. Hey, Take buddy. care, man. Thanks so much, man. All right. Bye. Thank you. Hey, buddy. There's a good buddy, General T-Storm, otherwise known as Chance Young. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Thank him for uh, sharing his... Um, thank him for sharing his... Alas- his story. Thank- story. I'm sorry, fans. His story. So I'm a little still under the weather, so I apologize um, for sharing his story. So thank you, buddy. Also, shout out to um, we definitely hit um, under the mat radio. We do support and have friends that do suffer with autism, um, very serious disease. Um, I have a cousin that suffers with autism, and have some other personal friends that do suffer with Asperger's syndrome, which is a mild form of autism, which I believe uh, General T. Storm has, and some of my other buddies. So we we have a big support supporter of. Those who have autism and make sure that they're okay. Very great people, definitely. Um, that being said, of course, to wrestling this Saturday, live, live, live in LCW Lancaster Championship Wrestling under the Mad Radio. We definitely going to be there. Tennessee Game Boy will be there. Oh, Tech, yeah. Shin, Light Skin Ross. Just wanted to let everybody know that. Of course, our good old buddy Gene Snisky, it's not his fault, the LCW heavyweight champion, will be going against the War Machine Rhino in a steel cage match. Yeah, steel cage match. Definitely will be going against. So this will be that main event. Very great show. There will be other great matches going on. Also, uh, Jay Diesel, uh, Ring of Honor um, talent, also a member of the House of Truth, will be going against. Red Scorpion, who we had both had both of them on the show a few weeks ago, will be facing each other in a street fight, and other great matches that'll be going on. So, of course, it's LCW Lancaster Championship Wrestling this Saturday, February the fourth, at the Lancaster Host Resort. You can follow them on Facebook at Lancaster Lancaster Championship Wrestling. You can like that page. Um, if you have mm-hmm. any information on tickets, please send them a message. So, definitely can't wait for that show. And yes. It is on February 14th, which is also Valentine's Day. So, happy Valentine's Day to all the couples and married folks yep. and relationships. Yep. Mm. And do side chicks or side dudes get happy Valentine's Day, too? No, that's the 15th. Oh, that's the 15th. That's side that side chick dude day. That means if like the uh, <laughs> if the couple they don't give gifts to each other, they get to a fight and fall out. That's when the side chick and dude get the next day. So you don't want to feel them left out. Uh, definitely uh, glad that um we're not on that at all. It's a regular nope. day for us. <clears throat> <laughs> so uh, of course we want to bring up. Something that's been oh, going tech. around, people get. Oh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, goodness, tech. Um, I got a breaking text, you know, from last week about movies that never happened. Not to throw anything right. off. No, good. But somebody gave me somebody gave me all the Street Fighter live live action movies that never happened, except for Assassin Fist, which just came out. Assassin Fist. Stay. Yeah, it's it's really good though. It go it's it's with the storyline and they become realistic. It came out like last year action? and yeah, I saw it. It's pretty good. Hmm. Well, I heard great things about that. Who, who actually? The, it it's not big. 
it's like small independent type movie. You know, is it like D rated movie or like C rated? Well, if you never heard of it, I think it's D rated. Okay, looking it up now. Street, let everybody know real quick. Uh, Street Fighter Assassin's Fist and it has. Yeah, I heard it's really uh, good. You did. The poster looks really good. It has some random dude praying around some uh, fiery bridge, and then underneath of him, we know it's Ken and Ryu because um, yeah, uh, Ken is blonde with a red, red gi, and uh, Ryu is a dark head with a white gi. Not sure who this guy is behind him praying. Uh, no, it isn't a coma. It's not good. Uh, it's not Gortetsu. Now, actually, I don't. Is this this is actually a TV series? No, no, yeah, this is a this is a movie that came out. Um, oh, well. This came out over the internet, and they showed it in the um, YouTube, and it, and you know people liked it, and they kept pushing it on the Street Fighter like page on Facebook. We had to check that out because uh, this looked up on IMDb. Uh, it's actually a TV series. Uh, it came out two thousand fourteen. Nah, she can fight Assassin's Fist, TV, TV series. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you, it, it's uh, one, one season, so. Yeah, look that up. And uh, also, Assassin's Fist, the movie. Hopefully, we can uh, look that up. The Legend of Chung Li never happened. Neither did the nope. original Street Fighter, the movie. Neither did uh, Street Fighter Alpha, the animated uh, movie. Uh, that never happened at all. What? Really? Yeah, horrible. Yeah, That's I, I had good. it. It's horrible. This, this is how good it was. Um, I had it. Cost me ten dollars. Gave it to my friend, and he's had it for ten years. Never tried to get it back. Mhm. It was better than live action ones. You got to say. Yeah, I guess I give it that. Because it did stick to a storyline, but the fact that Ryu had a brother and that was not his brother, it was more entertaining than the 1994 movie. Okay. Well, I guess you can give it that. Um, God damn. Definitely will. Now, we got to give big ups to a good old buddy, uh, Baltimore known and internationally known comedian Alabama. Uh, just text each other. Just want to give him a big shout out that uh, tomorrow morning, which is Wednesday, uh, Alabama will be appearing on TV One's Roland Martin show from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And on this Wednesday, uh, he will be showing, I'm sorry, Botch, tomorrow is Wednesday. Also, he will be showing up on Wildin' Out. Wednesday on TV One on News One Now, so we want to give a big shout out to our good old buddy Alabama, who is a supporter of Under the Mat Radio. They yeah. moved that from uh, MTV. Uh, I guess I didn't. Uh, not sure. We have to figure it out. We're not supporters of the Cannon, are we? Big, yep. Big ups to Alabama, good old buddy. Um, real quick, while we have some time, we have about eight minutes left. Um, core speculation is going all around about WrestleMania main event. Strong rumors that Daniel Bryan will be inserted into the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. And it could be a triple threat. So, and it's a game boy, Shin. Give your opinions and I'll get mine. We have seven minutes. Uh, NFC? Yeah, yeah. I, I think you know, but them re going back, you know, going back to the well, I, it may feel like you know it's a bad idea to them, but you know, technically Daniel Bryan never lost the belt. He had to forfeit it, you know, last year, and the fans know that. So if you want to stay in the storyline, the storyline would be he does deserve a chance to get his, you know, his title back. So what better way for him to get it back against one of the most dominating forces in the WWE right now, which is not Roman Reigns, but Brock Lesnar. And the most overrated force in the WWE right now, which is Roman Reigns. Yes, I think he's overrated. Uh, oh, yeah. Brock Lesnar versus Daniel Bryan by himself will be a great fit. But with uh, Roman Reigns there... You know, you can have somebody else to take bumps, you know, while Brock gets some rest and while Daniel gets some rest. So, I mean. Shimbley, your quick thoughts? I've been trying to avoid this for a long time. I mean, people kept talking about it, and and I hate spoilers, and that's why, you know, I have a beef right now with Ghetto Tony. Not a real serious one. Because I hate spoilers, period. I don't want to know anything. 
but it's just it's just how the fans feel. And personally, with me with uh, San Francisco, it's a big Samoan population. Okay, um, it's a big Samoan population. So Roman Reigns winning, it would do a lot for Samoans and, and you know increase that morale. And then plus, last night we found out that Rikishi is going in the Hall of Fame, so that's going to be a big upswell. It's going to be a Samoan weekend. But I, you know, honestly, guys. I didn't care less about WrestleMania as far as, like, the the events right now. It, it's just not moving me, personally. It's not moving you just yet. I mean, like, Brian and Ziggler were supposed to get together and have a match, and now they changed it to Ryback and Ziggler going to tag up. So. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, I, either way, I, I, would, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing... Uh, Reigns against Brock, but if you had Daniel Bryan, of course, that ad really honestly doesn't really matter to me. Um, either way, <clears throat> uh, one thing's for sure: Brock won't be keeping the title at the Mania. Brock will lose it. Um, he's probably going back to UFC. But uh, gonna to see Reigns as champ again, or have Daniel Bryan win the title again at Mania. But I uh, know it's the inevitable. I know a lot of people don't like it, but. Um, Daniel Bryan, uh, not Daniel Bryan, uh, Ralph Roman Reigns probably will be winning the title at Mania, regardless if it's a triple threat or a uh, one-on-one match. So, hmm. uh, anything else as far as uh, wrestling news related y'all wanted to cover as far as Lucha, Impact, anybody, uh, what was uh, that? did anybody see, anybody see the interview um, real quick, the Stone Cold interview with Triple H? I was just about to bring that up, and... That's for a subject for a longer time because um, I actually believe most of what Triple H said. Um, so I can't talk more about it because we're we're about to go off the air. Okay. Uh, and if you game boy, any your quick thoughts? Uh, WrestleMania is on the horizon, and yes, right now it's really looking pretty dismal. But um, you know, what I mean, we still got. One more um, quote unquote um, pay per view, which is Fast Lane. I think is that the name of Fast Lane. Well, actually, yeah. NFC Game Boy, um, the name is changed from Fast Lane to Fast Lane. One word. You know that's shaking the whole world right now. Oh, oh, really? But uh, but okay. to me, it sounds like Fast and Furious wannabe. It sounds like I just got it from Tiffany Scott of the Independent Podcast. She said it sounded like a drag race show. I don't get the promos either. Uh, I think I want WrestleMania to do bad. And if I can go what? there and watch it do bad, I actually want WrestleMania to be bad. I want this to be the worst WrestleMania of all time. It won't. I really won't. I know. No matter how I, I want it at least, at least in the top three. And the reason why is because the worst that this is, the worst the stockholders and all of them, remember, this is a publicly traded company now. This ain't okay. like the old days when, when Vince mess up, he can go back and, and, you know, fix it with, you know, the worse it does, the more pressure that he's going to have. And people are going to want to put their uh, their their money into other things, meaning he's going to have to make a drastic change. And that drastic change is hopefully put it into the hands of somebody who can give you a more entertaining product. You feel I me? Mean? Yeah, and uh, real quick, and this again, well, I'm gonna ask you this. I'm gonna ask you this as well. The article that Yahoo, the article that Yahoo put up, uh, three reasons why the WWE is doomed, and also what NEC Game Boy said. Do you think WrestleMania failing is bigger than Punk breaking the internet with his interview, or the or or the uh, 760 million dollars that Vince McMahon lost last year? Uh, WrestleMania failing is definitely the big, the big, that's the biggest. Because WrestleMania is the big, that's their Super Bowl. You know what I mean? It's, okay. You know. Yeah, anything, so WrestleMania things Yeah, um, okay. <clears throat> of course, uh, we'll get to this at a, at, a, at a later topic in March, getting close to me, and we'll be talking about the worst WrestleManias, and then we also talk about the Ooh. best WrestleManias. Yeah. So hmm. that will be a whole show. Um, real quick, fans, please don't forget, February 24th, we will have David Hero, who will be coming on to our show. And we will be talking about the debate, 
who has done more for the business, John Cena or Hulk Hogan. Also, fans, don't forget next week on Under the Match Radio, we will have Hood Slam, very controversial and great wrestling promotion in California. Please look them up. They'll be joining us and also a special surprise guest for Under the Match Radio. So that being said, thank you, Kerry Mercer and Rini for calling in. Thank you much for seeing Sir Strickland and Lucha Underground Elvery Network. Thanks all for the callers and much. Without that being said, Game Boy get the benediction. Oh yeah, I oh, gotta say amen. <laughs> all right, fans. Love y'all much. We'll talk to y'all next week.